No. Oh, come on, otherwise you have to do a forfeit. Come on, Doc, get come them on. skeletons oh. out. <laughs> well, there was something. This I've got over here. Uh -huh. Well, it was 1953, and uh, in Flandadno. I was staying with my Auntie Gwen on account of she'd had pneumonia and she'd just come out of hospital. Well, strictly speaking, you know, she weren't my aunt. But uh, I stayed with her when I was little, when I was evacuated during the war, and that's what I called her, Auntie Gwen. <laughs> and I remember she still got the bunting up from the coronation, strung between two upper windows. Anyway, I met this boy. Ooh, no. <laughs> no, I, I vaguely knew him, you know, because when we was little, he's one of the village boys, and he was one of the ones what used to tease us, you know, about our accent. I don't know why I'm telling you all this. Oh, <laughs> come on, Joy, you can't stop now. Well, I was caught in my Charlie at the time, and uh, I went out with him for a whole day, November the 9th. I remember the day, because it was the day what Dylan Thomas died, and it was all over the news. It was a terrible downpour, and we had to run for cover into a church hall, only it were locked up. But Joseph, that was his name, he got in through the side door, <laughs> and we were stuck there for three hours, you know, just listening to the rain beating down on the tin roof, and, well, I don't know really how it happened, but... We was wet and we was cold and we kind of cuddled up to each other and, well, one thing led to another. <laughs> and, well, I expect you can all guess what happened. You didn't, Doc. I'm afraid I did. <laughs> I kissed him. <laughs> Dorothy Cotton, you're a bit of a dark horse. Well, I am. No, it ain't much, you know, this day and age, but... It's haunted me ever since because uh, of my Charlie waiting back home. So what happened to this Joseph? Oh, well, we arranged to meet on the seafront the next day just before I went home. And I remember waiting for him. And I had a radio nearby. And they was playing the poems of Dylan Thomas over and over. Under the mile I moon. We trembled, listening to the sea sound flowing like blood from a loud wound and the salt sheet when it broke like a storm of singing and the voices of all the drowned swam on the wind. You never saw him again? I cried all the way home on the train. <laughs> it's really, really, but I hardly knew him. That's really sad. I can think about him. Only I married my Charlie the next year, and I mean, life goes on, doesn't it? That's beautiful, that is, Dorothy. I'm used to saying never make too many plans. Your whole life can turn on a sixpence. I'll say, when will there be dance? Oh, dancing music, whatever you want. Will there be any eligible bachelors? Oh, who does have them? Oh. You'll have your pick of the bunch, <laughs> won't you, Bowley? Yeah. Ooh. What? Ooh. What's happened? Well... Oh, Lord. It's that wobbly wheel. I've told you about it before, Doc. Oh, how's it going? It's Jen. Oh. oh, she can't walk. Just you sit tight. We'll have you there in a minute. Ethel, don't! Stop fussing, will you? I mean, go out and cross that road. I've been doing it for 80 years. Now sit still. We'll get it sorted out. <laughs> oh, dear. I'll do to go to my party. Oh, what, you're having a bit of trouble? Well, what you need is a bit of oil. Oh, oil won't be no use. Just give it off all this bust. Grab old Jim. We'll yeah, carry her. Yeah. Oh, oh, with my God. back, you must be joking. Oh, Which only weighs about on. five and a half stone. Oh, hey, Jamie, Winston, here. Come oh. here, give us a hand. Right, you fellas, now, just be careful with her. Come on, lads. On the count of three. One, two, three. three. Yep. Come on, lads. 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 Come
is this Mr. Exciting? <laughs> I feel like the Queen of Sheba. Ah, oh, come on, let's go. Well, it's very nice. <laughs> coming. I, I want you to give her all a really big welcome. <laughs> Remember, she's 85. you out, did I, Pat? I saw you give Denise them extra measures. All part of the service. Mm. Well, she's ever so happy. She's having a ball. It's just what I wanted. Is that so? Well, it would take a very twisted person to think otherwise. Why don't you ever learn when to back off? I beg your pardon. We had your little victory today. Quit while you're ahead, eh? It's not about scoring points, Pat. But I understand why you're unhappy. What? Well, Denise and Kevin. They want to get a place of their own, wouldn't they, after they're married? And Carly ain't gonna hang around. Oh, well, she ain't gonna be living with you. And nobody's gonna be living with you. Ah, oh, all on your tod, the wrong side of 60. God love you. At least I don't launch myself at everything in my front. It must hurt uh, not to have any real family around. And it's a shame most of yours wish you were six foot under. Who the hell do you think you're talking to? I think we'd better take this outside, don't you? Kevin is rebuilding his life. Nobody wants you round here. Oh, I think you'll find Dean does. Yeah, for how long? Till he sees you for the grubby little parasite you are. How dare you think you know about me and Dean? Oh, I know. He spent his childhood getting over what you've done to him, and then along you come and get your teeth in. Because he's the only thing you've got left in your miserable little life. You've got a mouth like your dirty little mind. Do you know that? You treat him like you treat your Kevin. So help me, I'll come after you. I'm his mother! And I... don't forget it! After what you've done to him! Oh, you think you're his mum, don't you? And Kevin's. All that peroxide's rotted your brain. Do what? You think you're mum to the old bleeding square. Think they respect you? They feel sorry for you. Cos you're nothing but a worn-out, dried-up old egg! Right, come on, who's having another one? Oh, oh, hey. Hey. <laughs> Come on, second wind. No, thanks, I'm all right. Don't give her any more pictures. Um, <laughs> look, I'm going to lay you, cos I'll, I'll come out with a bunch of lightweights in there. Look, two to the left, one to the right. You think you can get away with anything? Huh? That's rich coming from you. You've shown your true colours now. You've shown yours since day one. You're nothing but a pathetic washout. Well, you'd know all about that, wouldn't you? Failed mother, failed wife. I heard you sent your last husband to an early grave. How'd that happen, then? Never you mind. Get on top, did you? Crush him to a pulp. He had heart failure. Oh, what fellow wouldn't? Sleeping with that. to know how you're going to defend your precious little mum this time. Just trying to understand how my own mother could lie to us about something like this. Look, lying to you all has been the hardest thing I've ever had to do. Then why did you do it, Mum? I had some inconclusive test results. So why not just ask me? I mean, it's not like I'm a doctor or anything. For one, you weren't talking to me. Maybe Ash had the right idea all along. You could have told me then. Or me. I needed to take action. Bring this family together before... Do not use him as an excuse. Before your father gets out of jail. OK, I'm done. I am done. You guys 
You are welcome to her. Ash, wait. I'm leaving too. But unlike Ash, I'm not coming back. And why is that? Shame. Do you have any idea what it's been like to carry on this deceit? Day after day. The pressure it put me under. But even though it hurt me to the marrow of my bones, I put your happiness ahead of my own. And I always will. That's a mother's love, so no. I am not ashamed. In fact, I've never been prouder of anything in my life. Vinny? Kira? Mum, please don't go. After your betrayal? My selfish children turning on me like a pack of street dogs when I'm the only member of this so-called family strong enough to do what it takes to bring us together. You want me to stay? Give me one good reason why. Because we need you. And we still love you. <laughs> right, who's next? Yeah! yeah. Oh, this might take a little while to think about. <laughs> yeah, right. No, no, it's true. Most of our dirty laundry's already been out in public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've got one. Go on, Enzo. Go on. <laughs> I was going to tell everyone tomorrow, but I might as well do it now. You're too young to have a secret. Yeah. Shows what you know, doesn't it? <laughs> Let's hear it, then. I'm leaving. Oh, no. What? I'm leaving. Walford. Well, England. Ooh. Uncle Harry's asked me to go and work in his pub in Spain, and I said yes. Oh. You are joking. No. Did you know about this, Peggy? Used to me. A great experience, huh? Yeah. Whoa. Because she ain't going. Leave it, Kat. It's up to Dad, not you. Talk about it later, eh? You can talk all you like. She ain't going. You don't rule my life. Look, just shut up and sit down, so. No! You're always doing this to me and I ain't having it. Stop it, the pill. What's it got to do with you anyway? It's got everything to do with me. Uh, all right. I'll go and ask Dad now. You ain't going anywhere! Watch me! Kat, leave it. No, please, Kat. Oh, no, leave them, Nan. Leave them. Zoe! No, I'm better be picking on me all the time. I'm not picking on you. You're embarrassing me in front of everyone. Just listen to me, will you? I'm going. There ain't nothing you can do about it. Join the back. We go and ask Dad together, shall we? See who he listens to. Why don't you just leave me alone? Because you're not going yes, to Yes, I am. Get away from me. No, you don't rule my life. You're not going to Spain, and that's that. Why not? Because I said so, all right? And I do everything you say, do I? No, you can't tell me what to do. You ain't my mother! Yes, I am! It's a sort of lifetime achievement award. And I'd like to present it jointly tonight to my very good friend here, Patricia Evans. Along with a man who's always good for a laugh and a joke, my very special husband, Mr. Frank Butcher. And it's for a lifetime of irresponsibility, deceit, and plain, old-fashioned wickedness. And before you're all wondering, have I gone start staring mad, there's something I'd like to read out to you. It's from Frank here, and it's to me. He doesn't very often write to me, so this came as a bit of a surprise. Peggy, to me, this is... Oh, there he goes again, trying to spoil my big moment. You're just going to have to hold your horses, sweetheart. My dear, darling Peggy, I've been racking my brain to think of a good way of saying this. But the truth is, there is no good way. It breaks my heart to say it, but I'm leaving you. Perhaps there's a small part of you that is aware that no matter how hard I've tried, 
I've never quite been able to stop myself loving Pat. I fell in love with her the day I met her, and the feelings have never gone away. I might have learned to live with that if it weren't for the fact that she feels the same way about me. <laughs> We've both of us struggled long and hard to hide these feelings and pretend they weren't there. But when the four of us went on holiday with Terry and Irene to Spain, Pat and I found ourselves unable to pretend any longer. These last few weeks have been pure torture for us both. Neither you nor Roy deserve this. You are both fine people. And I pray that in time, you will find it in your hearts to forgive us for the pain that we have caused. By the time you read this, we will both be long gone. With great affection, Frank. So, why they're still here is a bit of a mystery. But one thing I've learned since I've been married to Mr Butcher is never underestimate his capacity to make a cock up of things. Apologies to all of you who've already received the invitations to the renewal of our wedding vows. No doubt they'll be collector's items soon. So, all it remains for me is to present the prizes. <coughs> oh. Oh. Hope you all enjoyed the fireworks. Good night. Why so angry, Kim? Oh, sorry, did, did she tell you that she walked into my class, tipped my breast pads out on the floor in front of everyone and told a lot of them that I'm a monster who gave my baby away? <laughs> Barely know these people. But you still wanted to spend Mum's last night with them? It's not uh, my last... Kim. Is this true? I don't think I've got that kind of anger in me. I don't know where it comes from. You lied to us. For months. No. I don't buy it. It's something else. Look, I just want to do something nice for Mum, OK? It's not my fault and you should let me cook. I wanted to be mum, make a stew for oh, my right. girls. You know what you wanted to do? You wanted to turn my whole family against me, and when that didn't work, my class. What? Now you want to be mum? You didn't want to be mum when the party was on. Remember, Dee? I fit in at the door, I walked by, she was dust. Be mum? No. We never had a mum. I didn't. You did. Someone had to get you washed, dressed, call you in at night, cos you was out all hours mucking about. You remember who? You. Me. <laughs> Even used to call me mummy. Oh, so embarrassing. Used to get slated by all my mates, everyone on the estate. But it was sad. She was confused. You're hearing this? I thought you got over it. But you never did. Did you? Because I'm still mum. And that is why the anger. Because you thought, if I can give him up for adoption, I can abandon you. And you really... Can't handle that, can you? Please. Never mind that I've had to give birth and watch them take my... take my boy away. 
Never mind all these marks and the milk and the loss. No, I've got to deal with your anger. Because we've all got to suffer until baby gets what it wants. OK, right, well, here's the thing, Kim. It was never my job to be mum. I didn't want the gig then, and I don't want it now. I've got Libby and Chelsea, and if you think you can call yourself a sister to them, you don't even hold a candle. Well, now you finally have to grow up, because it's actually happened. There you go. Consider yourself abandoned. What did it take? <laughs> Just about the corniest trick in the book. Oh, and you fell for it! The frightened little girl act, all wrapped up in a sexy little dress. Just so that I'd look really desperate and you lapped it up, didn't you? I bet you thought that was me well and truly put in my place. Well, I don't stay in place. I don't hide away or crawl under a stone. If I get attacked, I hit back. OK? Since you're hitting back, is it? Mm. Slipping a pill in my drink. Mm. Seems to be doing the trick. No, this is you being very, very stupid. <laughs> Turning a little niggle. A niggle? <laughs> Put him in the boot of your car. A little passing irritation into something much. Well, if you do that to people that irritate you, I'd hate to see what you do when you get really angry. You will. I promise. I'd just best leave you where you are, then. So what are you going to do? You're going to leave me here forever, are you? Don't you think Ronnie will find that? Or Billy, when he comes in to do his cleaning in the morning? You are a little bit difficult to miss, I suppose. But still, <sighs> there's always that. So what, you're playing big boy games now, eh? Is that what you are, Jack? A big boy, Annie, you don't look much like it to me right now. But you don't know what I am, do you? Because if you did, you wouldn't even think about doing something like this. Why? What are you? I'm someone you shouldn't mess with. How can you say that with a straight face? <laughs> look at you sitting there chained to a radiator. Exactly how threatening do you think you look? You know what, you got lucky. Your luck is going to run out if you don't stop this right now. Get this off me! No. Well, you imagine I wouldn't even think twice. About what? Have you got any idea of the sort of people I've come up against? No. Tell me. Not stupid little girls like you. All right, people who could it back? Well, maybe you should introduce me. You know, I could uh, pick up some tips. Yeah, well, that's not possible, I'm afraid. Oh, don't tell me. Sheriff Jack had them all banged up, had those big bad boys put away. So you're saying you, you've you actually got rid of people, not just had them banged up, you've well, actually... I'm finally getting through to you, am I? Well, don't you think I've done a lot worse? So is that why you're not a copper anymore? All that's behind me. I said I'd never go back to that. Mm. I'm impressed. Yeah, but if you don't stop doing this and get these cuffs off me, I will make you an exception. Well, you might anyway. I reckon I'm in for a good beating up now, whatever happens. A whole lot worse if you don't get me out of these cuffs! So the way I see it is what have I got to lose? What, are you seriously off your head? See, I was thinking I'd have to come back in here, you know, somehow get those cuffs off you. I mean, let's face it, they are a, a bit of a giveaway, right? And then I thought, sounds to me like you've made loads of enemies in your time. Any one of them could have come back here tonight, couldn't they? Decided to settle an old score. Well, that is it. It's game over. A game? After everything that's happened, you still think that I'm playing a game? <laughs> That's right, Jack. I switched it when I came back for the laptop. You're saying you've actually got rid of people. Not 
not just bang them up, you've actually... Well, I'm not finally getting through to you, am I? Or don't you think I've done a lot worse? Which seems to be working absolutely fine. 